move on to other health maintenance issues that require patient education. Now remember, you are going to be a nurse. A huge part of your job is to provide patient education at every opportunity. So all women, when they come in, need to have education related to their preventive health issues. This includes reviewing diet, exercise, cholesterol, preventing diabetes, substance use, substance abuse, and then screening for domestic violence. So let's go back up to cholesterol. The current guidelines provide strong recommendations to screen women age 45 and older for lipid disorders if they are at increased risk for coronary heart disease or if they have other behaviors such as tobacco use and obesity. Now recall, risk factors for coronary heart disease include having diabetes in and of itself, being obese can be a risk factor, family history is a risk factor. And the recommendations for younger women are similar if they have similar risks. So when we do the screening, we do a fasting lipid panel. So we'll look at the LDL, HDL, triglycerides, and the total cholesterol levels. Diabetes prevention is huge in health maintenance. We have far too many diabetics that are type two in nature. So the US Preventive Task Force from 2015 is recommending that we screen women for abnormal blood glucose as well as type two diabetes. And the women we should be screening are those who are at risk. So this would include women who are obese, women who have a high percentage of fat distribution on the abdomen, women who are physically inactive, women who smoke, now, when you look at all these risk factors, these are very modifiable and where we can make a huge impact on the burden of disease in our population. Now, other factors that are non-modifiable, but should raise the flag on should we or shouldn't we not uh, screen or test for women to have diabetes would include advancing age, their race and ethnicity, which we'll talk about in a minute, family history. Does this woman have a history of gestational diabetes, which is abbreviated GDM? Does this woman have a history of polycystic ovary syndrome, which goes hand in hand with abnormal menses and obesity? Does this woman have hyperlipidemia? Does she have hypertension? So these are risk factors that should make us think, should we screen her for potential abnormalities of glucose metabolism? So when we're screening, we're looking for impaired fasting glucose, glucose intolerance, or actual type two diabetes. When we look at race and ethnicity, keep in mind that the Caucasian population has the lowest risk. However, blacks, Latinos, Asian Americans, American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islanders, they have very high rates. The method of screening has also been changed. It used to be that we had to do either a fasting plasma glucose or a glucose tolerance test. But now we can screen by performing a hemoglobin A1C, a fasting plasma glucose, or with an oral glucose tolerance test. If any of these tests are positive, they need to be confirmed by a second test unless the patient has symptoms of diabetes present. When we're confirming the diagnosis, we need to repeat the same test. So if they had a hemoglobin A1C, we're gonna repeat that in several days. If they had a fasting blood sugar, we're gonna repeat that in several days. If the second test doesn't actually confirm the diagnosis, then we need to follow the patient. In the interim, we need to provide education regarding lifestyle changes that need to be made in order to reduce 
the possibility of developing diabetes. So the test should be repeated in three to six months. The recommendations after that is to rescreen the patient every three years unless the patient is at very high risk. And then we would do so annually. Moving forward, we have additional education that's fairly specific to women. First on the list is contraception. Yes, contraception should be a male and female issue, but let's face it, we've been talking about male contraceptive methods for years. We talk about it. There's been methods that are in development, but nothing has been brought forward to actual use. So the burden of contraception lies on the female. We want to discuss STD prevention. We all know that just say no doesn't work. In the height of passion, all bets are off. So we need to really discuss STD prevention so that a woman is prepared and is able to protect herself. And then the next issue is related to preconception planning. 